Hi everyone, I hope you're okay today. Uh, right, I'm going to be really, really honest with my views in this video. Obviously, it is all about authenticity and individuality in a world that is crying out for both of those qualities. That's what my Facebook page is all about. That's what I'm going to do here now. And I won't be apologising for any of the views, even if people find them upsetting or too challenging. Um, so, I've said before, I uh, want to make sure that my content is uh, uplifting and inspirational, but also at times that I need to present some context. And also, if I'm, I need to be honest with how, how I'm, I'm feeling in order to get the full authentic experience, really, from my page. So I'm going to say this uh, Facebook page and the content that I write, it's not what I want to do. It's really not. You know, I think if I was living in, in many other different uh, eras or epochs, then it's not something that I would need to do. But I feel that the, the I, I'm just, I feel like I'm surrounded by just like complete insanity. And I'm just, I'm really struggling to process things, what's, what's happened in the last few months, the fundamental changes that have, uh, that have taken place. Uh, and more to the point of the lack of critical thinking, questioning, and even more so uh, the, the society that we're turning into, turning a blind eye um, to real suffering, uh, death, destruction, and dare I say it, evil that's happening around us now. And I just can't process it. And I feel like I need to say, I need to say my piece to in my attempt to try to counteract the insanity that is going on with some balance and some different perspective. So of course I'm talking about coronavirus. Now, you know, I've never said that coronavirus wasn't a thing, it wasn't a threat, clearly it was. You know, I've been happy to do the, comply with the social distancing, uh, the extra, the extra measures in terms of regular hand washing. I mean, who wasn't doing that anyway though, for God's sake, but anyway, Yes, that, that's some aspects of it makes sense, but the reaction to it has been, has played into to some themes that were already uh, prevalent in society. One of those being, um, it was hysterical. I mean, I think our uh, mainstream news coverage has become increasingly hyperbolic and hysterical, uh, and that's played out across social media as well. I really do think, and I've argued this before, that we've lapsed into a state of complacency because we've not faced any widespread uh, and existential threat to our to our society since the end of the Second World War. Maybe the end of the Cold War. There's been no threat of disease, famine, authoritarianism, war, none of those things. And then along came coronavirus, uh, and I think a lot of people have, have uh, lost their minds. They've utterly lost their minds, and that's what I want to talk about. Really, it's um, so. Let's talk about the, the risk attached to it. I'm not going to start quoting statistics and things like that now, and I'm certainly not going to pretend that I'm an expert in uh, risk assessment when it comes to disease. I'm not an epidemiologist. I don't have. I'm probably speaking to many degrees from a position of ignorance. Yeah, I'm still entitled to my view. So here it is. So let's be honest, the risk right now from coronavirus is vanishingly small. Its prevalence is exceptionally low. Okay, now go and check the NHS statistics that out for yourself. Uh, and then here's the key thing, though. I think another, uh, another feature of today's world is I really think we're lacking in perspective. And there are threats and risks all around us all the time. But make sure that when you're working out or trying to balance what a risk is, how many, and you're seeing these statistics that are drilled, uh, you know, that are drilled into us and rammed down our throats every day for the last few months. Consider how, how many people are in the population. Consider whereabouts in the demographic that you are. And consider that, you know, particularly if you're a young and healthy person, then I think you have a, you know, a, a, um, a, a very, very, very low chance of, um, of, of contracting coronavirus and it, and it, um, you know, and suffering as a result of it, which is not to say that, you know, anybody who has lost loved ones from coronavirus, obviously it's a tragic thing. But I think we've fallen into the trap of mass confirmation bias and mass distraction. We've become distracted by this disease that we've been told to become distracted by. Mass fear has been drilled into the population. Um, and I think that the, um, 
the, the measures that are being taken and the fear that is, that is, that is now instilled in society as a whole uh, is completely disproportionate to the threat itself. Right, um, and there are some pretty significant and worrying and concerning pitfalls and outcomes that has, have resulted of this or focusing are on this one disease. So we're now living, and, and what worries me is how these extreme and damaging and heartbreaking scenarios that are starting to play out now have become normalised. And that worries me. What kind of society does this? So let's let's go through let's go few through a few of the um, you know through a few of the consequences of focusing, directing resources, having all the media attention on one issue. You only need to look now about our cancer referrals, and the uh, it's just starting to just starting to be talked about now about the the excess deaths that are going to um, that are predicted to occur as a result of people not being diagnosed with, um, you know, not being able to do cancer screenings, um, people who are having cancer treatment withdrawn from them. Old people in care homes who've been left to die alone or who continue to be there, old people with dementia who are, are starting to die at a quicker rate because their families aren't allowed to come in. Old people in hospital, not just old people, dying alone because they're not allowed to have visitors come into hospital because of coronavirus. Funerals taking place in hospital car parks, in church car parks, with little, if any, family present. People dying and their, their lives not being on, honoured in the way that they, they, they should be. Many of whom, very old people who have some have fought in the war, fought for our very freedoms. And then that's not even talking about the regular routine medical appointments that have been cancelled. The children who haven't been in school. The kids going to nursery, getting temperature guns pointed at their heads by nursery workers wearing masks. Even now, children going to school and only being, being told they can only associate with certain children who are in their bubbles. I mean, what kind of society is this? Mass compliance is more dangerous and leads to more evil than mass anarchy even. And I think if we look, any society that gets throughout human history that gets told we're doing this for your safety, it leads to a pretty dark destination. And that's where we are now. Now, this isn't everybody, but there's certainly a theme in society who are obsessed now with this idea of staying safe, of being safe. Safe from what? Safe from what? I mean, if we had a news conference every day at which the government and media were there and they were telling us how many people have been admitted to hospital with cancer, how many people have been admitted to hospital with heart attacks, how many been, people have been admitted to hospital from accidents that had occurred, whether road traffic accidents or playing sports, whatever it was. Then imagine, can you imagine, would people all of a sudden then have their perspective shifted? Well, yes, they probably would, because, you know, the risk effects of, uh, you know, attached with drinking alcohol. I certainly drink too much alcohol. Probably means I'm storing up trouble for the future, eating fatty food, eating too much red meat, too much sugar, leading to diabetes and other health conditions. Going out on a bike, going for a bike ride, going out to play football, going for a walk out in the country. Everything has a risk factor associated with it. Yet we've become, we've got this one-itis now, this myopia attached to the risk factors of coronavirus, which is incredibly, incredibly low. It is very, very true that madness is very, very, insanity is rare in individuals, but for the group, it is the rule. And the more people that you have in that group and the stronger the message, then the more myopic that that group think becomes. And here's something else to consider. Doubt. 
is a more healthy perspective to have with anything than certainty. And there's a hell of a lot of questions to be asked about coronavirus. Now, I heard a, a, uh, an advert, we're bombarded by adverts at the moment, from, uh, certainly from, from government um, across, you know, across internet, radio, TV. And it was talking about the spread of disinformation, misinformation regarding coronavirus. And I don't doubt for a second that there are people with ulterior motives who are trying to pretend that there is no, uh, there is no threat whatsoever. But what struck me as very, very, very disturbing was that the, the, this advert was saying to listen only to what the government was, was saying and that there, there are certain facts uh, associated with the disease. Basically, what it was saying was don't question anything that we're telling you. Now, there's a hell of a lot of questions. Coronavirus is still not very well understood. Part of the reason why they're struggling to develop a vaccine. Anything to do with science needs to be questioned all the time. There is no such thing as the science. A conversation needs to be had around, around well, everything, you know, there's, um, and it, but here's something, if there are, if there's one group of people that's telling you to listen to what they say, not question anything, it's the state and it's the mainstream media. Please remember that. Please remember that. You know, I hear people saying that the freedoms that have been lost, that they have still haven't been restored, that they'll come back to us naive. Why will they? What's that based on? What assumption is that based on? Certainly in the UK, yeah, we have been a liberal free society. That doesn't mean it's going to continue to be that way. Oh, it's done for our own good. It's done for our safety. Take a little look through history and see all the, see all the historical events where the state and the media have told the citizens this is done for your safety see where that ended up P people please start questioning what's going on here please start questioning i you know i have uh, i have a young nephew i want to be able to look him in the eye when he's older to understand to what what happened in this era in which we live and say that well i was one of the ones that did challenge what i was seeing what was going on right in front of my very eyes to stand up for you know for 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 democ for freedom and for the for the right the freedom is the right to be able to go out and take a risk in order to be free we're not going the right way with things here we're not we need to desperately we need some perspective here because i think society is looking at the wrong is looking the other way and terrible things are happening all around us now. And what kind of a world do we want to live in? Okay. So please, we need to start getting some perspective. We need to start, we need to realise that safety, you can't have a completely, a completely safe and risk-free world. At what point are we going to be prepared to go back to normal? Right now, the prevalence of coronavirus is incredibly low. How low does it need to go in order for us to be able to say, okay, things can go back to normal now? What if, and this is a, this is a strong possibility as well, the prevalence uh, starts to increase in the population. And the moment you step out the door, then you are going to have a higher risk of, uh, of contracting coronavirus. What then? At what point do we say, okay, this madness has to end? Please start asking these questions. Okay. That's all I've got to say today. See you soon. Bye-bye.